Supernatural Season 10, Episode 21, Dark Dynasty. Now, to say the least, I'm not exactly happy with the way this episode ended because I wasn't expecting that. I didn't think that we would end up losing Charlie by the end of this episode. I didn't think we'd lose Charlie in general. And going through the episode, I didn't think anything bad would happen until she really did go missing. And I started to think back on this season and she's been in this season a lot and I was I think I mentioned this um in the last episode that she was in it was like you know she's been in this season a ton she had a lot of different episodes she came back from Miles we had like the split personality thing the book of the damn stuff and that's a lot of episodes for you know characters that aren't a part of that main season to come back for it's written it was really cool like I like Charlie I get the nerdy references because I'm a nerd too and I didn't expect this to happen by the end of this episode and of course I was hoping like maybe they kidnapped her or something it was like just any form of hope and unfortunately we did lose Charlie by the end of this episode I don't think that well based on the preview for the next episode they couldn't um get her to cast and kind of bring her back to life and that really sucks and I was thinking like this I was like why didn't they call Cass and it's like I completely forgot about the fact that angels don't have wings anymore they can't just you know hop around like they normally do and it's just like I didn't want that to happen but unfortunately uh, by the end of this episode we did lose Charlie and she was able to get the information for the codex she was able to decode the second layer of the code that even Rowena wasn't able to break through but it was really unfortunate and I was hoping that there was some way that she got out of it, but, you know, we lost another good character, and going into the last two episodes for this season, the next one, I think, is going to be Dean kind of going back, or at least getting really close to going back to Demon Dean, and he's going to be on the edge for for a while, like, maybe in the last two episodes, he's going to be on the edge, because there's a lot of crap going down, he obviously was angry in this episode. He knew stuff was going on, of course. Um, when he finds out that the book can't be destroyed, which no one knew until this episode, that's when he realizes that, well, I definitely saw something kind of burn to a crisp, and if it wasn't that book, then that means, you know, Dean has it, and everyone's brought into it and stuff. And it just really sucks. Like, I, like there's a lot of amazing stuff that happened, but, of course, with the ending uh, being what it was, that's all I can think about now, because I was just hoping... You know, like the last 10 15 minutes i was just hoping like this i really hope this doesn't happen because i just wasn't expecting it i i'm never i guess i'm never expecting them to kill off a character and i never we never really see it coming unless it's you know one of the villains or something but in this case it was surprising it was like charlie who comes in and it's like oh she has some issues here and there she struggles but Typically, it's Charlie. She comes in for, like, the nerdy, funny episodes, and, you know, she goes on her way. And it was surprising how, obviously, how real it got by the end of this. But I did love this episode. It was a great episode. And despite the sad ending, we did get a lot of amazing stuff in this one. First off, we did get to see um, Rowena and Charlie together, which I thought was kind of funny. And just some of the silly stuff they did do with Rowena, like Sam... When he was kind of rallying everyone, it's like, you know, for Dean, and uh, Charlie says it, and Cass says it, and then he, he he looks over at Rowena, and she's like, I hardly know the guy, and she's, you know, she's chained up and everything, she doesn't, she's not one of the troops that's gonna get rallied, she's kind of pissed off right now, like, she's in handcuffs, not really at full strength and stuff, and it was kind of good what they did with her character in this episode, where she was talking to Charlie about how she you know, kind of made it the minute that she saw her, like, she knew that Charlie kind of made Sam and Dean and Cass, like, her new family, and she mentioned that that would get her killed, and I didn't think it was foreshadowing, I thought she was just saying, like, oh, at some point, you know, you'll kind of become evil, that's honestly how I took it, I didn't think, you know, they're foreshadowing for this episode, but I enjoyed it, I thought it was well done how they did that, and how they made it kind of funny, and uh, some of the stuff they did with Cass was hilarious, like when he called Sam and Dean picked up and he was just like frozen and it was just like, um, I was checking in like I do and, you know, this call was pointless, which is really funny because when he said this call was pointless, I was like, it's so weird, but that's exactly what Cass would say because he does things and then it's like, he goes to like 
angel mode instead of human mode is just like super literal stuff like when he, um, he was talking about the referee thing and I was like it's kind of funny but even him covering sounds exactly like what he would say where it's like this call was pointless but I called because he's not a human anymore he's not exactly in human mode he's you know back in angel mode and I thought it was actually a funny cover because he says weird things like that and it kind of works but you know there's a lot of stuff going on there and you know, we'll have to see exactly how Dean deals with all that stuff. He may or may not be too mad um, with Cass, but obviously he's going to be, he's super pissed off with uh, Sam. And like I said, that might carry on through these next two episodes. Who knows um, how things are going to go in the season finale. Like, it's called Brother's Keeper, and I know a little bit about what's supposed to happen, like tweets and this and that, so I don't know what to really expect for that episode, but I'm incredibly excited. I'm a little nervous too. It's like it's called Brother's Keeper. It's like that's always whenever something's called it's like I'm my brother's keeper, it's dramatic. That's just that's a term you use when something is very serious and dramatic. So I don't know what we're gonna get in these next two episodes, but I'm incredibly excited for them. Um the stuff with the Steins, them being Frankensteins and uh, I just got that. I didn't even think about the fact that they just cut off the Franken part. But the Steins, the Frankensteins, that was amazing. I was like, honestly, I was watching it. He was like, you know, we're Frankensteins. And I was just like, I was like just swearing. I was like, motherfucking Frankensteins. Like, it's insane to me. And it's awesome. It was like, they went hardcore. Like, just of all things. Honestly, I thought they were going to say, like, Dracula. That was the first thing that came to my mind. But I think Frankenstein makes way more sense. But... Like, the nutshell is how my brain works, like, vampires, like, they're all just, you know, vampires. But, um, which does happen in the show, but they'd be walking around and not eating people. That doesn't make sense. But they're all Frankensteins, they're from the Frankenstein line, and I love what they did with their characters. We got to learn, they aren't, um, they aren't magically boosted. They're, like, the crazy evil, like, they have, like, crazy evil future tech, where they actually put multiple organs inside of people. The guy had two hearts, um, extra muscles. He ripped his arm off, which was also an awesome scene. Like, Dean was just like, oh my god, he ripped it off. And it just went to commercial. And it was super gross. It was like, the arms just hanging there in the thing. I thought he could have broke out of that too. I was thinking, like, yeah, he probably should have put more muscles in his arms because he's still screwed. And they didn't even handcuff him both times. They only put it on one of his arms, so... I thought that was kind of funny. It was like, you know, extra muscles in the legs and stuff. I'm like, probably should have done it in your arms. Wouldn't have been caught. But I thought that was an awesome explanation. They're, the Frankensteins, it's like, it doesn't, I don't think it can get cooler than that. It's like, they went old, super, super old school classic monsters. And they brought, you know, Frankenstein, like the family, to the 21st century. And they made it perfect. They're all still kind of Frankenstein's monsters, even though they are, you know, Frankensteins themselves. And it was just really cool. Like, they do bioengineering. They just, you know, I want this, I need that. Like, you know, better eyes here to harvest people. You know, better organs, this and that. I thought it was just amazing. And it made sense now um, why the characters survive, you know, being shot multiple times and stuff. Maybe they just have so many muscles um, just packed in. Bullets don't go all the way through. Or maybe they do have two, three, five hearts, crazy stuff like that, but it was awesome, I love that, and we got to see, um, at least one of the leaders, we got to see, like, the guy, um, called the older man Daddy, which was kind of weird, and it's weird when I say it, but, um, we got to see them and kind of the dynamics of that family and how some people are at this level and other people are kind of pushed down to the lab rat level, and I really have to wonder, what are they working on at this point? They've gotten, you know, they've gotten to the point where it's like you can put two hearts in someone and put like, you know, an unbelievable amount of muscle in someone's legs. They can drop three stories and then just take off. What are they working on next? Like they're building, you know, Frankenstein's monsters. And it's just a cool concept that I cannot wait to see come back in the next season. I think it's going to be pretty amazing. I think they will be. Uh, the main villains if it's not going to end up being Rowena and she'll still kind of be like the side villain who may or may not kind of take over um, two seasons from now with you know this family coming in I thought oh it'll be cool if they come back for an episode or something but seeing um, 
how much lore they kind of packed into this one episode where it's like we're worldwide and they have you know Frankenstein's monsters they double hearts and tons of muscles and crap like that they're probably going to end up being the main villains because they're decoding the book in this episode but since it can't be destroyed and you know the team is the one that has it this family is going to be coming after them unless they give it to Rowena which would be a horrible idea they're going to have to fight to protect this book and maybe they can keep it if they get it in the bunker it might be fine because that's what the bunker is for but who knows like it should be some pretty crazy stuff I love this episode it was a sad ending but it was definitely an amazing episode a great reveal for the Stein family being the Frankenstein family and that's why you know they're so rich they you know cause the black plague and every giant disaster that we've dealt with is kind of them either helping make it happen and then they just make a ton of money off of it or you know something very similar to that so I definitely love this episode it just had you know sort of a sad ending that I wasn't expecting or remotely prepared for because when it's someone like Charlie it's just like well that's the character they bring in she'll do some stuff that pertains to the main storyline of course but typically speaking like I said she's just the funny character who comes in kind of like Garth like Garth had an important role like the stuff with Kevin but mostly when Garth comes in it's like here's a one-off episode it's pretty funny a little nerdy because it's Garth and it's fine they, they kind of go on to the next episode and that's pretty much it I wouldn't expect them to do an episode where Garth comes in and he gets killed off but if next season he's in a bunch of episodes, I might start freaking out because I'll think they're going to kill him off too like they did Charlie. But I did love this episode. It was um, great to get the Stein family in there, great to get all that info. Uh, we have the decoder from Charlie by the end of this episode, so they're going to unlock the codex either in the next episode or in the season finale. I would assume it's going to be in the next one and then you know things just go nuts in the season finale, but... I'm excited for it. We also did get Crowley. I almost forgot to mention that. We got to see Crowley, and they did touch on the fact that he kind of had tabs on his mother just to know at least where she's at, kind of what she's doing, and now she's vanished. So he's got people all looking for her. Um, one less now because he totally stopped the messenger, which I thought was messed up, but that's also Crowley. Um, you know, I love the scene where he was just throwing darts at the guy on the uh, tied up to the pillar, which was funny. But... We got him in there. He was also talking to the hamster, um, or Jurgle. I don't know the difference. I think it was a hamster. Um, so he's talking to the hamster, and apparently he can understand hamster speak, which is hilarious to me. But he also gets some really serious information with some demon lover that Rowena used to have. And this person's apparently still alive, so he has someone else searching for them. And I don't know what that's going to lead to. I don't know if they maybe they'll team up who knows like it's, there's so many possibilities with that but i cannot wait to see kind of what route they take with that so i'm excited for it um there was one random thing that completely caught me off guard that i it was just like one of those funny things and it was when they first looked at the footage of the guy after he dropped off of the building and like oh, a lot of tv shows do this it's like you know the crazy zoom and enhance and enhance stuff but they did it and the guy kind of did the thing and it zoomed right in on the guy's arm and I was instantly just like fuck you like it was just like I don't really don't do that but it was just like it was too obvious that it was just fake and also uh, when I rewound it because first off it didn't just zoom in it obviously switched to a completely different picture because it went from full screen to like widescreen so it was like not even close to being like the normal fake zoom and enhance it was like it obviously just switched to a totally different picture but when he did that and it switched it switched to a picture and you could see that the guy's arm had moved and stuff and it was just like it was, it was way too obvious for me not to talk about it because normally it's like that's just that doesn't exist you can't just zoom in from that far away and see a tattoo but that was just so obvious i had to randomly talk about that because it, it just hit me like that it's just too much like it was too much fake for me so i wanted to randomly throw that out there but i did love the episode despite the sad ending i, I definitely enjoyed it um of course i want to know what you guys thought about it so please comment below let me know your favorite parts your least favorite parts um i think i, I know everyone's least favorite part about this one 
But I do want to know um, how you guys felt about Charlie's death at the end of this episode. And also, um, what do you guys think of the Stein family and them being the Frankenstein family and learning about how they can, you know, jump out of buildings and how it's actually, like, it's it's a mix of spells. Like, they made it seem, the way he was speaking, he kind of did make it seem like it was just bioengineering. But, I, you know, he does mention that the book helps facilitate them as far as what they do. So it's some form of magic in some way. Because, uh, obviously, you can't just be like, here's an extra heart and it just connects to random stuff. Because we don't have, like, organs that just, you know, stuff doesn't just shoot and connect to other organs if you just throw an extra piece in there. So there's some spell work going on, too. But, you know, I want to know what you guys uh, think about all the just everything that happened in this one because it was a very important episode leading up to the last two and the next one does seem like Dean kind of it seems like he's going to be really teetering on the edge like he's going to be going after the Stein family for sure um I did love the silencer that he put on his gun I thought that looked really awesome but it's going to be him on the edge and he's going to be shooting a bunch of people obviously holding a bunch of people you know in headlocks and all sorts of crazy stuff and then we're still gonna have Crowley looking for whoever he's looking for now Sam and Cass trying to deal with Rowena because Dean still doesn't know about that and of course that would have been a bad idea if Sam told him that I thought he might when they were in the car and I was like it's probably it's probably a good thing he still kept that hidden because if he told him that that probably would have just sent him right over the edge and that might end up being what happens um by the end of this uh, into the next episode where they do find out and maybe Crowley reveals it or something like I know you guys are holding my mom and he says it to Dean and it's like here's just another thing that's freaking stupid that Sam just did so I want to know what you guys thought about this episode so like I said please comment below let me know and thanks for watching